Hey there, welcome back to Mastering Kinemaster. Today you are going to take your film footage that is plain old boring shot on your phone like this and get it ready for cinema like this. I'm going to use techniques only using Kinemaster to make your footage pop and make it ready for a feature film or just your YouTube videos looking really cool. If you're interested, remember, like, and subscribe, and then follow me on the other side for techniques in color grading, masking, and chroma keys to make footage that is so cool, it's going to be ready for Hollywood. See you on the other side. What we're really going to do in this project is to intensify your footage so it looks like you saw, and we're going to isolate and separate a piece out that in my case is the eyes, but it could be something like an apple. But the first step we're not actually going to do, but I just want you to see this was the original footage, and it needs to be sized and shaped the way that you want it before you start to work on it. So in my case, I really wanted to make the eyes larger, and then I wanted to do some stabilization. I did this in this project, but I just wanted to show you that that needs to be done in advance, and then exported so we can use it in the next step. I want to show you for a second the final version of what we're going to do. There's four layers in here. Each of them is what we just exported, and each of them has a different color function that you're going to learn about in a minute. But I want you to see the stack, and I want you to understand that you do your motion dynamics in advance, because if you change something afterwards, it makes it really impossible to work with all of the other layers in the stack. Now let's start rebuilding this with a new project. The clip in this is going to be a brightly colored background. You're going to use that because when you chroma key things, you're going to want to see through it down to the bottom. Now we're going to insert a layer, which is that exported video that we just made. We're going to bring it in and scale it up. The rest of the layers will be duplicates of this one, so make sure you get the size exactly right with the corner handles still available because you'll need the corner handles later for masks and possibly for chroma keying. This first part is where the cinematic look really comes from. I call it adding a contrast layer. You duplicate the layer that you have, and then you go into the adjustment properties, you take all of the saturation out, and you increase the contrast in it. So our saturation goes to zero, and these settings you can set for yourself how much contrast that you want, but what this does is then we go into blending modes, we put it into overlay mode, and that overlaid mode makes what is effectively a stencil on top. It highlights the dark parts and it kind of flattens some of the other colors and gives a very cinematic look. I frequently use this style when I'm doing things even without doing the chroma key of the eyes just to make my footage pop and look cinematic. Let's come back to the completed project for a second and I'm going to show you what each of the layers here do. Now there's a stack and I want to remind you that the timeline down here doesn't correspond to the layer orders that you see. When I talk about the top layer, I'm talking about looking down like it's into a building and the roof is the top layer and the ground floor is the bottom. So the contrast layer that we made is always the top layer and I'm going to start by turning the alpha opacity off on that so we can see what's going on underneath it. All right, then you can see that the eyes are really bright in this because I've made them do that in what I call the mask layer. Now I'm going to turn the background layer off and this is your original content or the bottom of the stack. Always the original content sits at the bottom. Now when we turn it off, it looks pretty weird, right? I'm going to explain how to arrive at making these, but I want to show you the functions of the other two layers, the mask layer and the chroma key layer. All right, so let me turn the chroma key layer down first, and I'm going to just turn the opacity off on this. And when you're working with your project, you can use alpha opacity to make be able to see the layer individually that you're working on. So this is what you're looking at right now is a layer that is a masked area. I do this because this is where I'm going to change the color of the eyes and make them brighter. But in order to do that, we can only use one of the shapes of the masks. And again, we'll see how to do that in a minute. But after that, then we need to, what we don't want it to look like is this. So I'm going to turn on the original layer. So if we just did the coloration in my eyes with the rectangular mask, then it would look like this, which just doesn't look like what we're looking for at all. And so now I'm going to show you where the last piece of it is. And this is the chroma keyed out layer where that 
The content sits on top of the part of the colorized layer that we don't want to show. And now let me turn the colorized mask layer down. And so you can understand what the chroma key layer looks like. Excuse me. I just hit the wrong button and uh, alpha opacity and turn this one down. And you can see that what this does is that this chroma keyed layer has the eyes knocked out so that the rest of it is the same content as the original layer, uh, but the eyes will show through. And then your entire stack of four being the eyes heightened, the chroma key sitting on top of them in position number three, your original content at the very back, filling in everything, and then your contrast layer on top of it, making everything cinematized, alpha opacity. And there we go, that is the final project. Now I'm gonna show you how to do the masking and the chroma key in the next part. Back to the build project, we are gonna create the mask layer now by duplicating the original layer. KineMaster places it on top, which is great for now. Later on, we will send it backwards behind the contrast layer. But for now, while we crop and change the color, here is fine. So we go into our cropping menu, we turn the mask on, and we use these handles to drag the box down around my eyes, and you can see that we're building the mask right here. Let's leave it for there, we can fine tune it later. Now let's go ahead and we will adjust the color properties of this. This is to your own liking, but you're going to want to increase the brightness because the contrast layer is going to bring that down. You probably want to increase the saturation, and then you could actually increase the vibrance, and you could either make them bright red, not for me, but I'm going to bring mine down to color temperature blue. Again, this is totally up to you, and you can come back and adjust it later for making it look the way that you want to look after you've got your whole project assembled. And so for now, this is looking pretty good for here. And then we're going to use this menu up here and we're going to send it backwards behind the contrast layer and we'll get a first look at how it's going to look. Now that looks pretty good to me. My eyes are popping pretty hard and blue. Next, we are going to work on the chroma key. What I want you to do is duplicate your background again, and you'll know which one to duplicate because there's no red marks like you just saw, because KineMaster does rearrange these physically in the timeline at times, but we duplicate this one. It comes up to the top, and now we're going to use a software that I have the link name. It's just a free app called Pixacolor to pick the color out of our eyes, or if you had an apple, for your chroma key that we'll use in a second. And as it turns out, there is a conflict between the color picker and my screen recorder, but I would move this circle around and have the point be on a point of the eye like it is where it says blue-gray 800, but the important number is pound 37474F. We are going to use that as our chroma key start. Now we're going to enable the chroma key on this layer and not even worry what it looks like because the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the other layers transparent, opacity zero, so that we can tell what's going on with what the chroma key is actually doing. So all three of the other layers will have their opacity set to transparent. And now we will see what the chroma key did. Now, you wouldn't expect the chroma key to have a very good chroma key, um, but and it doesn't particularly, but we've got it ready to work on the chroma key now. Now we're going to set the key color to close to that 3747 4F that we had. Okay, if you're not familiar with this, you see this when I change the G, the second two numbers are changing 3747, 48 is fine, something close, and then 4F. And the way that it goes is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then it starts with letters. So 4F. Okay, 3744, four, and this is close enough. Okay, and so we hit the checkbox, and now we go here and we're not seeing anything yet, but we want to do is we want to move over to show the mask and then we want to pull these because what we want to get is we want a situation where we see the eyes really, really black. Okay, so this is looking pretty good is that the eyes are black and the area around it is white, which is what you really want. That actually we want black eyes and white around it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and unshow the mask and that is approximately what we want. Now you can work on this a 
lot. Watch my Chroma Key tutorial to learn more about how to do this. And I can't say that this was a fantastic job right now because I'm moving quickly. And the other one took me about half hour to do, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn the alpha opacity on these layers back up. There are the eyes coming through. Uh, there's some other residual stuff that I would work on. Turn the opacity to 100% on that is the, um, uh, that is the contrast layer and then turn the alpha opacity to this one being the background layer and the last thing that you need to do is rearrange the layers now a problem that we have here that i can see already is to the top left of my head that some of the stuff is showing through and in my eyebrow as well i would have to fix that in the mask but i go ahead and this is the one that is the blending layer so that one sits on top so they bring that to the front and it makes it pop harder and then if we would go in and I'm not going to do it in this tutorial, but I would work on this chroma key and I would do the various things that are in my chroma key tutorial to fix um, how some of the edges are on that. I'll just, I'm going to, oh, look, I got it. I got it pretty good there. And, you know, you can work on it to your heart's content um, and then we're looking good there. The last thing that you might want to do then after that is go into the colorization of your um, masked eye layer and you can make some more changes. One thing that I had forgotten to say is if you increase the highlights is that can make you see how the blue is popping harder, lower the shadows or increase the shadows. You get more crystal out of it. This is just kind of like doing it to your taste. So that is how you get this cinematized eye popping look. Okay, I hope that all made sense. Remember, you can watch it twice. I know it's complicated. Try it out. Test it with your footage. Hopefully, you'll make some really cool stuff. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. I always answer them. And if you have ideas for future tutorials, put those in there as well. And get out there and make something awesome with the best mobile video editing platform, KineMaster. And I will see you the next time. <laughs>